Deputy Martin. Thank you, Kian Corla. Um, Taoiseach, unfortunately, uh, it looks like the nationwide 24 hour strike uh, with nursing is about to go ahead um, tomorrow. It's the first time since 1999 uh, that the country's nurses and midwives uh, are going on strike across the health services. And um, it, it will cause um, disruption uh, to many, many yes. patients uh, because of appointments cancelled, outpatients, electives cancelled, uh, and an impact on the health service uh, generally. Now, the nurses and midwives and the uh, INMO and the PNA uh, have been seeking an engagement from the state for quite some time now, and they've given plenty of notice. Um, and there is no doubt that the nursing profession is under pressure. Nurses working in our acute wards, in intensive care, in theatre, in A&E departments, uh, are under enormous pressure. Morale is low, Taoiseach. There are significant human resource issues, and without question, uh, paying condition uh, is central to that low level of morale um, and the impact that hospital overcrowding over a consistent period of time now has had on the work, condition, work conditions and the pressure that nurses are under. It's interesting that agency nursing, for example, is costing the service 1.4 million a week. Now that tells its own story in terms of um, what's going on in, 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 in terms of shortages. Now, the recruitment and tension, retention issue of nurses is central to this dispute. And there has been alternative views. The Public Service Pay Commission are saying there's not a retention or recruitment issue. I would have doubts about that, Taoiseach, and I think it's important to put it on the record and just put on a marker that we do need to have greater data, for example, in terms of how many graduates are leaving every year our student nursing colleges um, to go overseas. Huge numbers. How many nurses are we recruiting in overseas? I think it's out of kilter by any yardstick or measure. Entire cohorts of students are moving either to the UK, Canada, um, um, Australia, uh, and, and, and other countries. Uh, and, there, we, and I think we're uh, recruiting then, we have to over recruit overseas then, huge numbers at significant greater cost. Uh, and if you look at the cost now of educating degree in nursing, um, and likewise the cost of orientating, making sure people are properly e equipped and have capacity and so on to, who come from overseas into Ireland, there are huge costs involved um, in that. And, you know, I read a very good article in the Evening Echo last week, Naomi, for example, a nurse in CUH, uh, Mary Farrell, a nurse in De Mercy. They spoke about their concern about missing care. Uh, the patients they're missing out, patients are missing out on certain care. That's their worry, that's their concern um, because of the pressures. Now, I know the WRC has had a hearing um, that may go to a full Labour court hearing. Um, the Minister seems to have indicated that he would be anxious that the machinery of state, the industrial relations machinery of the state, would be deployed uh, to help resolve this dispute. And it's taken some time for that machinery to get engaged. <laughs> If it's referred to a full hearing at the Labour Court, Taoiseach, um, will the government abide by whatever outcome arises from such a Labour Court hearing, now, Deputy, just as it did in terms of the Garda pay dispute some years ago? Taoiseach. Thanks very much, um, Deputy Martin. Just before I begin, very briefly, uh, I wanted to offer uh, my condolences and those of the government uh, to the family and friends of uh, people who've lost their lives. Uh, on the roads uh, in the last week gone by, uh, in particular the four young men in Donegal who lost their lives on Sunday. Uh, Michal, Sean, Daniel and John, I know were very much loved in their communities and their deaths will be mourned across the entire country. And although their laughter may have been silent, we remember their lives today and the promise that has been cut short. And our thoughts and sympathies are with the Rorty, Harkin, Scott and Harley families uh, at this time. Uh, in terms of the, um, uh, the questions that the Deputy raises, uh, first of all, uh, I can say the Government had a discussion uh, about the uh, impending nursing strike at Cabinet this morning. Uh, we're very aware, of course, that the INMO, the largest union representing uh, nurses and midwives, uh, intends to uh, engage in a 24-hour strike tomorrow. Uh, I certainly have no doubt about the depth of feeling uh, by nurses and midwives in Ireland about their pay uh, and their conditions, and that was reflected uh, in an overwhelming ballot in favour of stri strike action, and I have no doubt of the considerable public, public support 
uh, that nurses and midwives will have uh, should they choose to engage in strike action. And efforts are ongoing at the moment in the Labour Court uh, to see if we can have a full hearing at the Labour Court um, with a view to a recommendation after that. Obviously, if there is a recommendation made, government will have to consider it. I think it would be very rare uh, for government to uh, reject the recommendation of the Labour Court, but we would certainly have to uh, consider it um, uh, uh, if, if such recommendation arises or if we come to that point. I should say regrettably that in terms of patients and patient care, um, the damage is already done. Uh, over a thousand operations cancelled, um, thousands of outpatient appointments cancelled as well. Uh, even if the strike is called off at the, at the last minute, it will not be possible uh, to reschedule uh, those appointments for tomorrow. So in terms of patient care, uh, unfortunately the harm is already done. Uh, but we do want to avert the strike uh, today if possible, uh, and we do want to find a solution. But that solution has to be one that's affordable for taxpayers, it has to be one that's fair to all public servants, and it has to be one that's fair to patients. So when I say fair to taxpayers, what do I mean? Affordable for taxpayers. Um, we ran a small budget surplus last year. I uh, hope to run, again, run one again this year, uh, although um, that may not be the case uh, if we end up um, with a hard Brexit and no deal. Uh, it wouldn't be fair to taxpayers to borrow money to fund pay increases. There are good reasons why you might borrow money as a country, but borrow money, borrowing money to fund pay increases is not good policy and only leads uh, to um, pay cuts down the line. I don't want to subject anyone to that ever again. It does need to be fair to all public servants, uh, other people working in the health service, uh, other people working in other parts of the public service, and if we do a special deal for one group, it won't be possible to do the same deal for everyone. That just wouldn't be affordable. So we need to look at the wider picture and be fair to all public servants as well. And we also need to be fair to patients. Uh, no matter how wealthy a country is, the health budget is limited. And I wouldn't like to see money being diverted away from new medicines or new equipment or new treatments uh, to fund pay increases. So we have to bear all those things in mind. It has to be affordable for taxpayers, it has to be fair to all public servants, including other people working in the health service, and it has to be fair to patients. Thank you, but if we can find a solution in that space, uh, well, then the government will be happy to be part of it. Deputy Martin. Um, well, for, first of all, Taoiseach, I think you, one can say that about any additional expenditure or any additional tax relief, ultimately the taxpayer has to pay for it in some shape or form. Um, and uh, the Garda pay dispute of some time ago was resolved by the Labour Court. And the government accepted that Labour Court uh, recommendation ultimately. Uh, and it didn't upset or undermine the public service uh, stability agreement and the public service pay norms. Um, and the, in, in terms of, you know, there are ways and mechanisms, uh, creative ways through which uh, these issues can be dealt with because it's not today or yesterday that these issues were raised. Uh, I can go back to James Riley's time in, in health when you know, there was an, ongo an ongoing row with the INMO and Minister Riley who denied that salary was an issue then or that they were being paid worse than others in, uh, in other English speaking countries. Um, and so it's not today or yesterday that this, this, this claim, if you like, has been on the table. What has been lacking has been a proactive, creative, creative way of resolving it, I was up there, unlike please. the approach that was adopted in terms of the Garda pay dispute, uh, which your government did um, uh, contribute to in the end, because I don't believe the Labour Court came up with its recommendation out of thin air. Uh, I believe on high, the Labour Court got a nod uh, that it could make such a recommendation. Time is up, um, Deputy, please. That, that's, that's what happened then. I think it, the issue has, has dragged on interminably long, and we need a resolution to it, and we need the prevention of the, the, and any disruption that occurs to patients as a result. Um, in relation to the Labour Court, the Labour Court, Labour Court, it's a government body, it's part of the state, it's part of the state's industrial relations machinery. Um, obviously, if there is a recommendation, uh, government will look at it uh, with that in mind. Uh, I think it would be very unusual for a government to reject a Labour Court recommendation. I've seen unions doing it, I'm not sure I've ever seen uh, government bodies doing it, or if they have, it's been uh, a rare occasion. Um, but obviously, uh, no Taoiseach and no government uh, could commit to uh, a recommendation that they have yet to see. And the Labour Court doesn't um, make its recommendations on the basis of it being mandatory on both sides. Uh, that's not the way uh, our industrial relations machinery works. Um, but you're incorrect to say that the resolution of the guard dispute didn't have a consequence for public sector pay. It did. Uh, it required a renegotiation 
uh, of the Lansdowne Road Agreement, which was there at the time, and had a knock-on effect uh, across the public service, um, which resulted in additional costs for taxpayers of about 150 million euros uh, that year. And as you rightly say, um, as is the case with any public expenditure, there is an opportunity cost uh, because of that.